There are a lot of stories out there on the internet where people think they know things about Disney and working there, <laughs> and they're not true. Here are seven commonly heard myths about working at Disney that aren't based in reality. So there's a lot of fun stories out there on the internet about what it's like to work at Disney and common things that you hear. Uh, for example, you hear about the Have a Disney Day. It's Have a Magical Day, not Have a Disney Day. And it's not always mean. But there are a lot of other myths out there as well. Ones that you hear pop up on a regular basis that aren't true. Here are seven common ones that I hear that aren't real. <laughs> Number one, if you forget your name tag, you automatically become Chris from Orlando. I hear this one pretty often, and there is actually a very small chance it may have been true at one time in the past. The reason that Chris was used is because it's gender neutral. You could have guys or girls named Chris. But the truth is, this isn't real and hasn't been real since at least the early 2000s. And honestly, I think it probably wasn't real to begin with. When I started working at Disney in 2006, I did have a time pretty quick early on where I had forgotten my name tag. I had two vests and my name tag was on my vest at home and not on the one I was wearing that day. And, uh, you know, it happens. I was Greg that day. They pulled out a box and there was probably about 20 or 30 name tags with all sorts of different names. And the idea was to pick a name that was close to yours so that way you wouldn't get confused when somebody was trying to talk to you by name and you going, eh, who? <laughs> we had all sorts of different names there. A variety of them. It wasn't just one. It wasn't Chris. It wasn't just from Orlando. There was another time later on that I had forgotten my tag again. Same kind of thing. And I was a completely different name of a different person entirely. In fact, I honestly don't know if I ever saw a Chris from Orlando in that box. So, no, not true. Myth. Sorry. <laughs> Number two, there is only allowed to be one person with a certain name working at the parks. This is kind of related to the Chris from Orlando, and this might have been true in the very first couple of years at Disney, but even then I kind of doubt it. But it basically says that if your name is George, that if you are the first George there, you get to be George. But the person that comes after you named George, they can't be George because you already have a George. So they have to use a different name because there can only be one of each person's name at the parks. I honestly have no clue where this one came up. I tried doing some research on it, and I can't find anything about this. But I hear it come up on a pretty regular basis. Uh, we had at least four Georges working for PhotoPass at Walt Disney World. Four. And all of us went by George. In fact... One of the other guys was also George from Sacramento. So we even had two of us that we could have switched name tags and we could have gotten away with it because it was the same hometown. We had several of us with the same name and I knew other Georges as well. I knew a couple that worked in entertainment. I knew one that worked in merchandise. The idea that there can only be one George in Walt Disney World, honestly, when you think about it, it's kind of crazy. When I was there, there was 55,000 to 60,000 cast members. At one point, there was over 75,000. How are you going to have one unique name in all of those people? It, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to be possible for you to keep every single name unique. Can't happen. It, that's a pie-in-the-sky dream. So, no, uh, you're going to have multiple people with the same name working at the parks. That's just how it is. Number three, cast members can't sell cast-exclusive merchandise while they're working for Disney or they will get fired. <sighs> there is some nuance to this one. Um, there is some truth. There is some non-truth to it. So it really kind of depends. There are definitely things that while you were working at Disney that you were given that if you sell, you're going to get fired when you're caught. 
Uh, a good example of this is the free tickets they give you to use for family and friends. If you use your main gate or what's called a hard ticket, which is actually a ticket that you can give them to use, if you sell that, sell the privilege for them to come in, make them pay you for it, yep, you're going to get terminated pretty quick if they find out. There were cast members that used to sell their tickets on eBay. <laughs> they got fired. So yes, you will definitely get fired for that. If you are given something while working at the parks, uh, for example, there's typically a Christmas gift, which is a, like an ornament or something like that. If you turn around and you sell that online for profit, yep, you're probably going to get fired for that as well. However, you can use friends and family's money they give you the money, you go in, you buy a cast member exclusive pin for them, and then give it to them for that cost, you're not going to get in trouble for that. If you sell it to them below cost, you're not going to get in trouble for that. You're basically allowed to take what you're given and give it to people as long as you're not making a profit. So if you sell it online, it gets questionable. Now, as far as selling like cast member exclusive merchandise, as far as selling cast member exclusive merchandise, so for example, the... Uh, Figment lanyard that I was given. This is a cast exclusive item. You might be able to get away with selling it online for a small profit. Postage, handling, inconvenience. You could probably get away with that. If you were to sell it for 130, yeah, you may be pushing your uh, luck there. But then again, that might be okay. The policies will change. They will fluctuate a little bit. That may or may not be okay. I wouldn't want to push it personally. But you can sell things as long as you're not doing it as a side business and a side hustle. Uh, another good example of something, a side hustle that people got fired for, is they would rent themselves out. Hey, I work at Disney on my day off. I'll come be your tour guide. I'll get you in the park. I'll take you around. I'll show you how to do things. And you pay me hundreds of dollars. Um, <laughs> nope, that's not going to work either. Basically, as long as you were not using your job at Disney to fund and finance and resource a second job, you're going to be fine. But if you're making profit off of it, yeah, that's where you're going to get in trouble. Number four, cast members are making out all the time backstage. They're smoking, they're drinking, they're doing drugs, and, and oh yeah, and they're doing the naughty. I, I can't believe how often I hear this. It, it really blows me away because it's not based in reality. At all. Now, you do have a lot of cast members who were CPs, college program. They have a whole uh, living area for them. It's a different place, but they're dormitories. I have heard some stories of a little bit of this coming out there. Even then, it's case by case. In five years at Disney, and three years at Silver Dollar City, and two years at Busch Gardens, I never once saw anybody making out backstage. I never saw anybody doing drugs backstage. I didn't see anybody drinking alcohol backstage. I did see some smoke in designated smoking areas. That's okay. Uh, you never saw the kind of misbehavior that I see cast members getting accused of. They didn't say horrible things about guests. They weren't making out. They weren't, they weren't doing things that they shouldn't be doing. I mean, after all, it's a job. They're going to treat it like a job. They did treat it like a job. They weren't there for Party Central. Now, if you wanted to see those kinds of things, go on a grad night. Uh, go on some of the teenage events, the cheerleading competition days, the night of joy when you get all the Christian uh, youth and teens there. Anytime you get the groups that are unescorted of teenagers, yeah, they will do it. You run into the guests doing it. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion were... Uh, but... That's why there's cameras on them. They can see you. So yes, we did sometimes have issues with guests doing things like that. But cast members? Nope. Uh -uh. They wanted to keep their jobs. Number six. If you yell, Andy's coming to the Toy Story characters, they're going to fall to the ground and lay motionless. There actually was a very, very short period where this was true. Um, I think it was part of the promotion for one of the movies. Uh, they very quickly realized this was a safety issue. This was a guest service issue. Uh, wearing those costumes, not good. 
no, 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 no. I think there's a couple pictures out there. I actually did see a picture of this. We didn't do it. In fact, Toy Story 3, I believe it was, had come out uh, while I was there. And if somebody yelled out, Andy's coming, we would respond with, Andy's at college. <laughs> so we even had an answer for it. But uh, no, they don't do it. The costumes are not safe to drop to the ground in. Uh, if you're meeting with a guest, you really don't want to interrupt that interaction with them. So that way you can have a joke. Very short-lived. Big mistake. It's not going to happen now. You're not going to yell something at the characters, especially if you're not meeting with them. Uh, that's going to get a response like that. So don't do it. Don't be obnoxious anyways. Don't be a jerk. <sighs> okay. Before I get to my last one, here's a bonus one for you. <laughs> the characters have air conditioning in their costumes and or their heads. <sighs> nope. Um, I do know that there are some fur costumes out there that people make that will actually have the big heads and they'll put a fan in there that's battery powered or something like that. Uh, nope. Disney doesn't. No air conditioning, no cool suits, no fans, nothing at all like that. There's a reason why if somebody asked me, thinking they were smart, cute, ha <laughs> ha, I know more than you, I'm going to break the magic. Um, okay, if we had somebody like that that would come up and say, Hey, they got air conditioners in their heads, don't they? Do you have one in yours? Yep, that was pretty much the response that I would give them. And honestly, I think there were guests that had more air conditioning in their heads. There were definitely a few that I really wondered if there was a wind tunnel there. But um, <laughs> no, no air conditioning, no cool suits. That one's a myth. And then number seven, my last one, very timely in light of everything that's gone on. Cinderella Castle can be taken down in the event of a hurricane. Uh, this is almost kind of like the lady who sued Disney, claiming that a brick fell out of the castle and hit her in the head. True story. <laughs> no, she didn't get hit by a brick any more than the castle comes apart for Hurricane. The castle is built with a steel frame, concrete, plaster. Uh, it ain't going nowhere. It is designed to withstand winds well over 100. Actually, I think it's rated like 175 or 200 miles an hour. It's some ridiculous ridiculous number. That castle is rock solid. It ain't moving. You can throw a hurricane at it, and several times they have been thrown at it, and it's fine. Now, there are a lot of other things around that they actually will move and tighten up and close, and I actually did a video a few years ago about hurricanes at Walt Disney World. Check out the link below or up above. That castle isn't moving for a hurricane. They're not taking down the turrets. They're not taking pieces off of it. It's solid and it can handle the biggest hurricane you can throw at it so nope the idea of the castle coming apart it's a myth so there are seven myths plus a bonus one that i often hear about working at disney did i cover the one you wondered i'd love to know if you've heard some that were funny or interesting or, or you are genuinely curious let me know in the comments below and hey if i get a good response i'll do a follow-up to this one let me hear your stories, let me hear your myths, let me hear your weird questions, and I'll be happy to address them later on. Thank you so incredibly much for my sponsors, my YouTube members, my Patreons, for helping to finance this and so much more. They get a lot of benefits if you want to know more, as well as fan pages, links to merchandise, what equipment I use. Check the description below, there's a ton of info. Thank you so incredibly much for hitting that like button, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you as well for watching. God bless. We are recording. We look good. Of course I look good. It's me. All right. This is Disney cast member myths. Yeah, this is all that stuff that people think they know and they don't really know. So... There are a lot of stories out there on the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Number one, at Walt Disney World. If you forget your name tag, it... <laughs> if you get... <laughs> Number four. 
It's like this... <laughs> doing things that they shouldn't be doing. But, no, right now... That... <laughs> right now, never. <laughs> and may God bless you for what? And thank you to... Blah, 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 blah. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to know about my merchandise and fan pages and more, be sure to check the description below. If you'd like to know whenever I've got a new video posted up, make sure you hit that button right up there and subscribe. If you want to see another of my videos right now, well, I've got a great one for you right here. And if you'd like to be like these wonderful people here and support me financially on Patreon, well, make sure you check that link right there. There's all sorts of perks and benefits. Thank you so much and God bless.